some of you might be wondering what are the Goldberg variations? Why are they so important? Um, so the Goldberg variations were one of the last works composed by Bach, composed in 1741. Um, this is the longest keyboard, like single keyboard work that he ever composed. Um, the original name was not the Goldberg Variations. It's actually a rather mundane one. It was called an area, an aria, and a diverse set of variations for two manual harpsichord, uh, which is a perfect description of what it is. Um, however, the name Goldberg was attributed later. Um, we don't really know the whole story, but Goldberg, Johann Goldberg, was one of Bach's very promising students. He was 13 at the time the variations were composed, and it's possible that Bach composed this as sort of an instruction manual for Goldberg to learn from. And so you can sort of see that in the structure of the variations themselves. So the second question is, what is a variation? A variation is a, a piece where you have a main theme, and then all the subsequent variations are based off of that theme. Bach does this sort of in a unique way. Um, we have an aria, which is sort of originally a vocal piece that he's arranged for an instrument. And the aria is based off of the harmony um, that he wrote a bass line for, a 32 measure bass line. And so instead of all the variations being based on the theme, it's all based on this harmonic bass line. And this is sort of how composition worked in the Baroque era. Uh, the composer would write the bass line and then build everything from the ground up. And Bach is sort of teaching students how many diverse possibilities there are with this single bass line. Um, the second important thing about this is the actual layout of these 30 variations, because 30 is a lot of variations, and usually when composers would write, they'd only write like six or 10 variations. So Bach wrote 30 variations in a symmetrical way. The piece begins and ends with the same aria, and then there's sort of a symmetrical turning point at the 15th variation. Um, and then if we dive deeper, each variation, uh, these variations are split into sets of three, and each set of three is sort of in a very particular pattern. The first piece in set of three is a genre piece. In the Baroque era, there were very specific genre conventions. Um, some of them are dances, folk dances of the time, from various different cultures. Some of them are more academic, like the few. Um, and so the first piece is an example that Bob kind of gives of each type of genre. The second piece in each of the three set, uh, three set cycles is sort of a fast-paced piece uh, dubbed an arabesque or a toccata. And then the third one is a canon, which is basically the melody overlaying on itself. If you listen closely, you'll hear that the melody starts, and then it begins again before it finishes. Um, and as the piece progresses, you can see the interval between the canons. Um, if those of you who know what that is, um, it increases from a unison all the way up to a ninth. Um, and so by the end of the variations, we have the canon at the ninth. Uh, and so that's just a little bit of a deep dive into the structure uh, to help you navigate through sort of the muddy waters of all 30 variations. Um, we sort of split the performers up into sets of three to make it more clear which, uh, uh, where the piece begins and ends. And so next we'd like to have each of the performers sort of come up and introduce themselves. Uh, first we'll have John who's playing the aria in the first three. Myself. I like music, as does everybody else here, presumably. I've been playing piano since I was six, and I've never played a harpsichord in recent memory. So I hope you all enjoy this. It's really nice to have an audience, so thank you all for coming. Hi everybody, my name is Giovanni, it's a great pleasure to be here because of 
such a uh, really uh, uh, awesome audience. So uh, I'm entitled to I mean to play and uh, yeah, for your enjoyment today with this great provision. So I think it's a very interesting and exciting project. So thanks all. Thank you, Giovanni. Uh, I will be playing after Giovanni. Um, just a little bit of background. I'm from Google. Uh, I'm part of the salon. I hope join the music circle soon, um, and I mainly play piano. Um, next is Zishin. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Zishin, and uh, thank you all for, for being here. Um, uh, it's kind of a surprise because um, uh, Shin has been saying uh, this is one of my um, random thoughts about this piece, and it came to be. Uh, reality very soon. So yeah, thanks for everybody who uh, joined and all the performance to make it work. And it's probably not the most exactly the thing I've ever done to a piece of music. So um, stay tuned for more. <laughs> <laughs> I've met many talented people through this musical group, really a nice bunch, so I'm very happy to be here. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Robert. I'm uh, from the Bay Area Music Circle, and uh, I studied this piece for many years ago and never expected that I'd get a chance to perform any of it for uh, an audience of any size because it's so long, so I'm very happy to be part of this uh, effort. Thank you, Lisha, for recruiting us. Hi, my name is Tim. I am also from the Bay Area Music Circle, and I'd like to thank Zishing and all of the other people for inviting me to play here. Um, I wrote a bio, but now that I'm actually saying this in person, I don't know what to talk about. So, um, it's fine. Anyway. It's fine. Just say anything. Oh, no. I, I was going to pitch that uh, I used to go to music school, and I am currently taking students. So, let's <laughs> plug. Oh, that will work. What's your yeah. number? Uh, maybe you can talk to me after the concert. <laughs> Enjoy it. 